This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Welcome, St. Lucas friends, to worship for the weekend of July 25, 26, 2020. My name is Bill Smoots. I am the Interim Senior Minister at St. Lucas United Church of Christ. As we prepare to enter into a time of lifting up our thanks and praise to God who gives us life, I want to both welcome the members of the St. Lucas community who are joining us for this online service, as well as welcome those who are discovering us um, however they have through online searching. Thank you for joining us for a few minutes or for the entire worship experience. We hope you'll come back and join us again anytime you are able. Before we formally move into our time of worship, I'd like to lift up a few announcements. First announcement concerns our in-person worship opportunity that continues to be a morning prayer service at 9 a.m. on Sundays in the pavilion on the church grounds near the athletic fields. The reason for our being outside is that the St. The St. Luke's Coronavirus Task Force is presently concerned about the growing number of COVID cases in St. Louis County and in the entire St. Louis re region, and so is leading with caution. The task force meets weekly and is committed to communicating any changes concerning the time, style, and frequency of in-person worship opportunities through an email blast to those who are on the church distribution list. Our Sunday morning prayer service is a casual worship experience that lasts about 25 minutes or so. Seating in the pavilion itself will be limited to those with the greatest mobility needs and the uh, church golf cart is available to pick people up in the parking lot and move them up to the pavilion uh, if their mobility needs dictate that. Appropriately distant circles have been painted on the grass around the pavilion and family units or individuals, couples are invited to occupy one. Please know that masks are required. If you do not have a mask, one will be provided for you, and there is hand sanitizer at several locations around the pavilion as well. An offering plate is available for those who would like to offer their financial gifts. And, and please remember that this is a BYO service. Bring your own lawn chairs, bring your own bug spray, though I've got to tell you the bugs have not been too bad thus far this summer. Bring your own water and especially bring your own sense of humor. Also, please wear casual clothes. It is hot and we need everybody to be as comfortable as they can be. There are a lot of people that are working behind the scenes to make this service possible, and I thank them up front for their efforts on all our behalf and hope you will thank them as well. Now, this Sunday, the 26th of July, the weather people are saying it is going to be hot and humid. And while we will not have the heat index of over 100 until late on Sunday, Sunday morning is still going to be warm and sticky. So if your body does not handle heat or humidity well, please, please stay home and be safe. Other announcements I'd also like to lift up include that every Tuesday morning at 10 a.m. there's an opportunity to have coffee with me, the pastor, via Zoom. Uh, it's a great chance for me to get to know you all and for you all to continue your friendships and perhaps get to know each other better. Um, one of the things I most cherish is, is seeing uh, St. Lucas friends connect with each other through this time. If you would like to be part of the Zoom coffee, please call or email the church office and a link will be provided for you. Also remember that on Wednesday evenings our uh, children's coordinator Michelle Ottinger is, is meeting via Zoom with the children of the church and again connect with the church office and, and get a Zoom link for that and that there's also a book study group on Thursday evenings led by Associate Pastor Kelly Archer. Um, a Zoom link is again available through the church. Our ongoing giving, uh, financial giving to the mission and ministry of St. Lucas is vital for our church. And for those of you who are giving as you are able in this challenging time, I thank you for your stewardship commitment. 
As you may be aware, the abrupt departure of the church administrator in the fall of 2019 has made the collecting and distribution of monthly church financial information very difficult. Thanks, however, to the hard work of the Finance Committee and other volunteers and staff, monthly and year-to-date 2020 financial information has just become available and will be distributed via a special e-blast in the next few days. This information will help us all see that we've got some work to do as a congregation in the area of stewardship. To learn more about giving to the church electronically, please visit the church website. Each Thursday, an information-packed email about Saint, the St. Saint Lucas community is sent to those on our distribution list. If you already received this email, I invite you to, to go through it in detail, to see the prayer concerns, to see all the opportunities that are available to us online, to read and to ask your questions. If you're not on the distribution list, please connect with the church office and we'll be glad to put you on it. Again, welcome to this time of worship. I invite us all to take a deep breath, to still ourselves, and to come into God's presence with gratitude and joy. Let us call ourselves to worship. You are the love of each living creature, O God. You are the warmth of the rising sun. You are the brightness of the moon at night. You are the life of the growing earth. You are the strength of the mighty rivers. Speak to us this day, O God. Speak to us your truth. Dwell with us this day, O God. Dwell with us in love. For we come now in joy, we come now in gratitude, that you may know our worship and our praise.
On behalf of us all, I now offer this affirmation of faith, declaring a portion of what we believe as disciples of Jesus. As a gathered community of disciples created by the hands of the holy, born with divine purpose and bound together by the spirit that breathes life into all things, we affirm our commitment to the way of Jesus Christ, who is the liberator of the oppressed, who is the bread of heaven, God in flesh. With faith, we aim to live life as Christ taught us, laboring towards liberation and seeking a world free of domination and control. We believe in God's promise to uplift the lowly and bring the powerful down from their thrones. We believe in the resurrecting power of Christ and that it cannot be overcome by evil, but persist in all collective efforts to make life flourish in the midst of destruction, to birth beauty in places of death, and to tend gently to the aches of the world. We profess the transforming power of love. We profess that justice is a form of love. We profess that we are still growing in the mystery of love. In the company of the saints who go before us, we journey together by grace, seeking always to unlearn all that obstructs authentic relationships listening for the guidance of the Holy Spirit and praying earnestly for the day that the beloved community of God is born anew. Until it is so, we live in hope, for God is with us. Amen. Our scripture reading this day comes from the book of Genesis, chapter 15, verses 1 through 6. Listen now for God's word. After these things, the word of the Lord came to Abram in a vision. Do not be afraid, Abram. I am your shield. Your reward shall be great. But Abram said, O Lord God, what will you give me? For I continue childless and the heir of my house is Eliza of Damascus. And Abram said, You have given me no offspring, and so a slave born in my house is to be my heir. But the word of the Lord came to him, This man shall not be your heir. No one but your very own issue shall be your heir. He brought him outside and said, Look toward heaven and count the stars if you are able to count them. Then he added, so shall your descendants be. And he believed the Lord, and the Lord reckoned it to him as righteousness. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Do you know this story? Do you know about this man, Abram, or Abraham, as he will be called? Perhaps you know the Sunday school song about Father Abraham and the many sons he had. Told and retold by people of the Christian, Jewish, and Muslim faiths, the story of Abraham is well known, not just today, but long, long ago, too, for it was a story that Jesus knew. Of course, that's not so surprising. We know our Jesus was a religious man, well-versed in the law and traditions of the Hebrew Bible. We remember that at the age of 12, Jesus sat among the teachers in the temple and amazed them with his knowledge and insights. Later, during his own ministry, Jesus used the scriptures when facing off with the Pharisees and the Sadducees, frequently quoting from the books of Exodus and Isaiah. When Jesus was wrestling with the devil himself, he replied upon the scriptures from Deuteronomy to assist him. And as he hung to die, he lamented 
with the psalmists. Christ's followers as teachers in that early Jesus movement also knew and used their knowledge of Hebrew scriptures. Paul writes of Job in his first letter to the Corinthians and James quotes Proverbs. Overall, there are 283 Old Testament references found among the books of the New Testament. These were the stories that formed them as a people of faith, as God's people. And friends, these are the stories that form us too. They are our inheritance. Abraham, who is called father by Christians and Jews and Muslims alike, is known and spoken of often in our Gospels and Epistles. Sixty-six times, in fact, including when Peter preaches in the temple in the book of Acts or when Jesus tells the parable of the dishonest manager in Luke. Many times, Abram is noted worthy based upon his faith, for he believed the unbelievable, except for God, who does more unbelievable things before breakfast. Well, you get the point. Abraham believed God even when it seemed unbelievable that in his old age he and Sarah would conceive a child and have an heir of their own issue, let alone descendants that would outnumber the stars. Hear now this passage from Paul's epistle to the Hebrews, as once again he recalls this starry night over Abram. By faith, Abraham obeyed when he was called to set out for a place that he was to receive as an inheritance. And he set out not knowing where he was going. By faith, he stayed for a time in the land he had been promised, as in a foreign land, living in tents, as did Isaac and Jacob, who were heirs with him of the same promise. For he looked forward to the city that has foundations, whose architect and builder is God. By faith, he received power of procreation even though he was too old, and Sarah herself was barren, because he considered him faithful who had promised. Therefore, from one person, and this one as good as dead, descendants were born, as many as the stars of heaven, and as innumerable as grains of sand by the seashore. I can't help but feel in good company then, today, knowing that our lesson connects us across space and time. For it is since ancient times that God has been busy making and keeping promises. God's promises reveal to us God's loving ways, God's great steadfastness, and most especially, God's relationship with us. A covenant, after all, is an agreement or an arrangement between parties, not a decree or a declaration from just one side. God is in relationship with Abraham and with us, and our very lives are fulfillments of ancient covenants made long, long ago. Here in Genesis, when God told Abraham that his descendants would outnumber the stars, he was talking about us. We are those stars. This relationship between our God and us, God's people, is the foundation of faith. It is at the heart of our Christian story and at the heart of God's dream for the world. What a dreamer this God of ours is creation, the cosmos, the story of God's people, the fullness of time when God came and fleshed on earth to love us and be our teacher. What a dream. God's faithful people are dreamers too, from the prophets and the dreamers of dreams with visions of another way, to dreamers like Jacob and his son Joseph, and that life-giving dream of the traveling magi, God's people never stop seeking 
God's ways. Awake or asleep, God's people are dreaming of new ways of being, of forever tries, and of a future with hope. Being people of God means being people of a dream. It means being a star overhead. I wonder about your dreams, your dreams of God and your dreams of your life in God's world. Even though now I find an expanse of stars spilling across the sky as comforting, for it is humbling, I can certainly remember times when knowing God had a dream for my life caused some anxiety. Have you ever felt this way? Like God has this one singular vision for your life, and if you missed it, you missed that important flight or chose the wrong college major, you would unknowingly be derailing yourself from that one perfect plan. If you think through this long enough and consider the 35,000 choices a person makes every day, like what to eat for breakfast, and the butterfly theory that connects all of those small choices to the big world, as when a butterfly flaps its wings in the Amazon and a storm ravages Europe. Who can really be weighed down by all the opportunities you have to just end up in the wrong place at the wrong time? Darn that rush hour traffic. I have learned, though, that God's dreams are far less specific and far more thematic than college majors or breakfast foods. God's dreaming of justice and righteousness and goodness and mercy in broad ways, not in narrow boxes. There's less need to be concerned about there being only one right path and more need to think about how to make any path you find yourself on more right by God by making it more just and more merciful. God is not waiting for you behind door number one or door number three. God is with you throughout all the doors you open and close along the way. God's dream for us is for our best selves. And part of living into that dream of being our best selves for God is remembering our worth as God's people as promised as stars over Abraham. In this story, and indeed in this world, we are both dreamers and dreams. We are beloved children of God, descendants of Abraham from a dream so long ago. We are also stewards and co-creators with God to bring God's ways of love and justice into this world. For just as we have been blessed to be a blessing, perhaps we have also been dreamt to be a dreamer, to tilt our heads upward, even in the dark of night, and wonder with hope what's next. Amen. Friends, I'd like to now invite us into a time of prayer, a time where we pray for the needs of those we love and care about, a time when we pray about the needs of our world, a time when we pray for ourselves and our needs. And to begin this time, I'd first like to invite us just to be silent for a moment, and in that silence, call to mind um, those whom we need to pray for, those situations we need to pray about. I'll begin our formal prayer with a period of silence. And in that silence, um, you are invited to offer up those, those names, um, those situations that are on your heart, in your mind to pray for, or you are invited simply to listen for 
how God is speaking to you this day. Maybe a little of both. The listening is definitely harder for us. But we'll begin with that time of silence. We'll then, I will then offer some prayer on our behalf and invite us to close together you in the words of the Lord's Prayer. And for those who, who may be joining us online, um, I invite you to use whatever version of the Lord's Prayer you know. Um, but know that we use the words debts and debtors in, in our service. And uh, you say what you say, and we'll say what we say, and we'll all get uh, to the end of giving God thanks together. Let us now enter into a time of prayer, first by coming before God in silence. Let us pray. Holy and loving and gracious God, we thank you for this day, for those you have placed in our lives, for the possibilities and the opportunities you call us to as your children. Help us, O oh God, in all we do and in all we say, to be kind and gracious and loving with each other, as you are those same things with us in the gift of Jesus. We thank you for this time of worship, when we may gather together electronically, when we may gather together in your presence and let you know how much you mean to us, how much of a difference you have made and are making and continue to make in our lives. Know that our prayers are heartfelt, O oh God. Know that our praise is equally heartfelt and that our gratitude for your loving presence is beyond measure. We pray this day, O oh God, for our friends and neighbors and family in the St. Lucas community. Be with us as a body of disciples, as a church of Jesus Christ. Help us to be the people that you have created us to be and the disciples that Jesus continually invites us to be. Help us to live with one another and toward one another and toward all others in the ways that Jesus teaches us to live with purpose, to live with integrity, to live with compassion to live in unity, to live without vindictiveness, to live without the desire to harm, to live always with the purpose of loving others and treating each other as we ourselves expect to be treated. Oh God, we, we so want to be your people and ask your help in making that possible. We pray for our larger community, for our state, for our country, for our world. We pray in this confusing time of coronavirus. We know that cases of the virus are spreading. We know that people of all ages are affected. For some of us, it's, it's a cause of deep and unsettling fear and anxiety. For others of us, it is an annoyance. For others still, it is something to ponder and to struggle to understand why. Why us? Why now? Why are we so powerless 
over this thing we cannot see. Wherever we are, O oh God, in our understanding or lack thereof, walk alongside us. Help us to care for one another. Help us to be calm and focused. Help us to do the things that make a difference one for another and for ourselves, that make a difference for you in this creation. And be with all those doctors and nurses on the front line and, and all the support staff that, that are caring for those who are ill. Be with scientists in their labs who are pushing day and night to figure out how we can better protect ourselves from this virus. Be with community leaders who must make one difficult choice after another. And be with our politicians that they may find a way to put political differences aside and see that the care of the people they have been elected to serve is the common priority of all of us. Help us to find such unanimity that we may care for all in our communities, especially the least and the last and the lost and those with preconditions. Lord, we thank you for the ways that you are in Jesus continually inviting us to be born afresh and born anew with reinvigorated energy, with, with, with new passion for serving others for the deep listening and movement of the Holy Spirit as we encounter it in one another and in the world around us. O oh God, it is a joy to be your people, a privilege to be brought together in a community of disciples. It is with hope that we seek to serve you hope for ourselves and for those we love, hope for your creation, that your ongoing work of bringing order out of chaos, of bringing newness out of nothingness, of bringing life and love to all in overwhelming abundance, that your work is not in vain and that we may be part of it. O oh God, we are grateful that you hear our prayers, grateful that you answer our prayers in part by the gift of your child, Jesus. It is in his name we pray, and now, using the words he taught us, we are bold to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
Paul wrote to the Romans that nothing would ever separate us from the love of God, certainly not life nor death, nor heights nor depths, nor things unseen nor things to come. And now we add pandemic to his sacred list, knowing that though we cannot gather in our church building, we have nonetheless gathered virtually to worship and serve our Lord as one community of faith, the people of God at St. Lucas. Virtually, we have exceeded the holy quota of wherever two or more are gathered. Thank you for being a part of this worship and of this community. Our worship service is ending, but our service to one another and to God continues. May you hear this benediction. Go forth from this place remembering who you are and whose you are, for you are beloved and you belong to God. Go in peace. Amen.